What's going on guys, in today's video, we're getting rid of this piece of shit bull bar. So this is the bar I've got. Yes, it's in pieces, so you're gonna have to put it together, but ends up going with the x rocks bar. No people are gonna give me shit, but whatever. It's light, it's the lightest one I could find, which is the main thing. Also, I'm not really looking to use it for protection because we're in Sydney. I don't really know where the kangaroos are around here, so anyways. Um, and the other thing is, was that I was going to make rock sliders eventually, and when I do that, I'll probably end up putting hoops on this bar, and then you have basically the same amount of protection. So I'm gonna unwrap all this, and we're both gonna have a look for the first time and see how it is. So that's one side of the wing, and that's the other one. Middle piece, looks good. And got the bash plate as well. Honestly, I've been thinking of painting this black, but I think I'll put it on, see how it looks like this, and then we'll go from there. That's a lot of nuts and bolts. <laughs> that is the aircon protector. And I'm gonna assume that's a bracket. And that's the other bracket. So I'm gonna to get to ripping this cradle off. Obviously cradle, winch, everything else that comes with it probably leads to big brackets as well. I've gotta read the instructions because I haven't yet, but I'm pretty sure they do need to come off because I think there's got their own brackets on there. The one thing I don't like about the X-Rox bar and a lot of other people would agree on this is that because it's so open in each of the corners, you can see your washer bottle and you can also see this here. So it kind of sticks out, a bit of a sore thumb kind of idea. So what I am going to do, I've gone to Bunnings, and because I've spent enough money on the bloody bull bar, I went and got good the bits of paint, $2 each, perfect. So a lot of people would use like Raptor lining, Raptor coating, whatever, you know, that textured stuff, it probably lasts a lot longer, but you buy a $2 can of this, if anything happens, you just spray over it again, and you're sorted. So all I'm going to do, once I take everything off, I just give it a quick sand down, and then I'm literally just going to spray everything black, so that it all mixes in together and looks bloody mint. about the middle part it's not really the problem it's more the outsides yes i didn't want to paint and wash a bottle it sounds stupid but i do want it to look you know just blend in not stick out like a sore thumb so yes i did paint it get over it that's it uh, i was painted the other side now i'm just going to let it dry um, but while we're letting it dry we'll start putting the bar together so right now i'm going to be putting the little end caps <laughs> I'm gonna start putting the end caps on. You're supposed to have silicon, but I actually don't have any. So I'll just put them on for now, and then later on, I'll just get some silicon and do them up to make sure they're watertight. So the instructions are by far not the greatest. There's not many photos, but um, from what I can see and from the old stuff as well, that's your bracket here on this side. So you've got your two places, holes for the bolts. You've also got your two already pre-drilled ones here from the original bar. So this will sit on like this. And then you'll notice there's a top one here. All you have to do is mark that out and drill it through. And then I'll bolt it in here. So I've had to take the condenser fan off for this side to be able to mark it and drill it, but there's literally just three bolts, one at the top, two at the bottom, and the whole fan comes out. So I'll mark this one now, and then take it off and we'll get to drilling. So it was quite hard to film, but both of the bull bar mounts are on now. That's the one you drilled. I bolted it on at the bottom on both, and then obviously there's the two on the sides. So now we're going to get on to actually doing the bull bar. All right, so the bull bar is finally on. I just had to muck around with the fitment a little bit, um, but these bars actually have, do have really good adjustments for fitment, just like a little oval slots for the bolts so you can move them around. But you can see on this side, it's 
sitting pretty much flush. I left a little bit of a gap just so that the wool bar is mounted to the chassis and obviously if that's body, just so if there are some vibrations, it doesn't hit. But it sealed up really nicely all the way around. And then even on the other side, that sits nice as well. Same amount of gap as the driver's side. So it all turned out really well. So super happy with that. The adjustment was awesome. All right, so now that we got the bar on, it's looking bloody schmick. The next thing we have to do is torsion bars. Because this is a steel bar, it obviously does weigh more than the alloy one. And because I am putting the winch, that's just another added weight. So this is about, um, I think it was about 55 kilos and then 50 to 55 kilos. And then the winch is about 20 kilos. So 70 to 75 kilos. It's what's gonna be on the front. And those stock torsion bars are just gonna sag like hell. So obviously, four wheel drive one hooked me up with the Tough Dog Heavy Duty torsion bars for the D22. So we're just gonna whack those in. Uh, it's probably something I should have done when I did the lift initially. Uh, I would recommend you guys do it because I never thought I was gonna get a steel bar and winch and here we are. So would have been a lot cheaper if I just did it from the start and that's it. But we're doing this now. We're gonna put the heavy duty torsion bars in. As usual, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna figure it out and we should be all good. So before I do anything, jack up the car, anything like that, I'm just gonna take some measurements. So I've got my tape measure here. So what I'm gonna do, just like last time when I was adjusting the torsion bars when I put in the lift originally, I'm just gonna measure from the guard to the bottom of the rim or from the guard to the middle of the hub. But what that does, it just tells me how high it's sitting at the moment so that when I rip the old torsion bars out and put the new ones in, I basically know how far to set it so I can set the height as it is now. So that's about 740 mil. So I've jacked up the car now and now underneath, you can see there's two nuts here. I'm just gonna take off the top one because I'm pretty sure that's the locking nut. And then the one underneath is the one that I'm fairly sure I need to just hold with a spanner so that I can wind out this bolt here. And then I'll count the winds. And then once this is under no tension, I can stop counting and just pull the whole bolt out. And then that should loosen up this side of the torsion bar. And if we come down to the other side, you'll see there's three bolts there. I think I might have to take out those three bolts and slip the torsion bar out, but I'm not really sure just yet. And the other thing I've done is taken the dust boot off and then there is a, if I can get a good angle of it, there is a circlip right there. You can see that little metal bit sticking out. There is like a C-shaped circlip. Just have to take that out as well. And then hopefully the whole bar should come out, but I'm guessing it's not gonna be as easy as it sounds. So let's get into it. So this is the side I actually wasn't supposed to be filming, but you'll see here, how sunken that nut is into this circle piece. And if you go over to the other side, this one is sitting up. That's because there's a cone at this bottom. Now this one has the cone, whereas the side that I'm not supposed to be doing doesn't actually have the cone. So it's crushed into it. So before you go undoing your torsion bars, check that you have the cone there. And luckily enough, I had an extra one off an old cross member I had. Um, they include the torsion bars and that's what they look like. It's a little piece here. Hopefully the camera will focus. And all that does is it sits on the bottom nut, underneath the bottom nut, and then that bottom nut should sit on top of this and then that sits in the cone and centers it. So you'll see what I mean when it's loose. I've done about, I think it was 25 or 26 wines and the whole thing's shaky. So that's got no tension under it now. So I'm just going to keep going, rip the whole bolt out, and then we'll go on getting the torsion bar out. All right, so you can see now I've got it out. It's out of the splines as well. Didn't end up taking the circlip out. I managed to get it out just by putting a pair of pliers in here and just tugging on it, and it ripped out the splines. Um, not really sure that's the way you're supposed to do it, but that's just the way I've done it. So you can see there, it's out now. So all I'm going to do is get this bit and just wiggle it out, and then I'll be able to pull this whole torsion bar out because I've already undone the bolts over there as well. So hopefully it should just slide straight out. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to figure out as we go. So I've got the torsion bar out now, the old one, new one. And basically the difference is this is a little bit thicker. The splines are also a little bit longer. So when I do stick it back in, I think these splines will stick out a little bit. That's all good. 
Uh, I do need to take the dust boot off and put it on the new one. What I'm gonna do now is just grease everything up and I've also got the actual bit that the torsion bar goes in. I'm just gonna clean it out as well and I'll grease that up too. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I messed this up the first time, but I'll show you now. So this bracket here, you can see, hopefully from this angle, that's a better angle, that it's not flat with here. You have to have it off starting a little bit facing down. That's because once you put the bolt through, it's actually going to twist the bar, which is the whole point of a torsion bar, and it's going to wind this thing up. So if you have it flat to begin with, flat with the cross member, then you don't get a lot of twisting force before the top of this hits the top of the cross member. So I messed that up before and I put it flat and then when I went to drop the car, it did nothing and the suspension basically fell to the floor. So I don't do that. Other thing is, circlip, I ended up taking this out and actually putting it back on this bit outside of the car. It was just heaps easier. Hopefully you can see that the second row. So it's on the furthest one back and it should be touching the cross member so it doesn't let the actual torsion bar move back into the hole here. So it should just be holding it on the clip there. And if we go on the other side, you see on this as well, this top bit should be in the corner and it actually should be like the lip of this should be holding onto the lip of the cross member because I did it before as well and it was actually through the hole and it stuffed everything up like I said before. So got to make sure that this lip is also on the outside. Just fiddled around with getting the splines to, hit in, uh, to go in there, which is just a little bit sticking out, which is fine. And same thing on the other side, it's only a little bit sticking out, but that seemed to be the best thing for me. But yeah, this is the biggest thing because I didn't do that before. I had it flat and I just ruined everything. So don't do my mistake and you should be all good. But so far it's going all right. I just have to tighten everything up and then I'll put the center bolt through this and we'll check the heights. All right, so I'm not gonna lie. It's been a while since I filmed that last clip. That was probably a couple months ago. Um, just have stuff going on, but I'm here to finish the video. So this is gonna be the final reveal of the new bar, the winch, and I put some other little things on there. So I'll get straight into it. So basically this is the end result. I think it looks pretty good. Definitely further away here you can see uh, from the wheel than before. So I won't have the same issue. Um, it actually fit on pretty well, to be honest with you. You can see I've also got the winch in there. I've just got it tucked up underneath and the control box here. Um, the winch bolts straight into the bar, which is awesome. I did have to change to an offset fair lead instead of uh, just the normal one I had before. That was just how the bolts and bolt holes lined up. The other thing I did do was that I went to one of these little swivel number plate things. You just pull the pin out and then you can swivel your number plate up and down, which is pretty cool. Um, you can probably make them yourself, but I just bought one because it was easier. With the bar, it also does have the mounts for the aerials and the lights and stuff like that. I know a lot of people don't like these bars, but for the price and the weight of them as well, they're really light compared to some of the other bars. I couldn't, couldn't say no, basically. Everything came up really well. You see in the video, I sprayed just under there with some black paint. And you can see after a couple months, it's still held up really well. So pretty happy with that. You'll also notice I don't have my spotties on there and the actual reason for that is because they don't fit there and there. They just hit the bar, the hoop's too small. So um, I don't really do a lot of night driving. So I thought I might just get like a light bar up here or just some small lights, um, but it's not really a big deal for now. Something that can come later. Overall, I kind of like the look of the bar. I think it's grown on me a little bit. A lot of people don't like it, but at the end of the day, the price of the bar and the weight, like I said before, 100% worth it. Um, I wouldn't mind doing some like hoops off to the side kind of thing uh, just to cover the lights to give a bit more protection but then again like I'm in Sydney so like I'm not really going to hit a kangaroo or anything like that. So in terms of the torsion bars I'm going to be honest I had absolutely no clue what I was doing um, so it took me a couple of goes but I got there eventually. Um, I found it a little bit of a muck around but it was definitely worth it. I didn't really realize how much of a difference it would make uh, compared, to, uh, compared to the standard ones on and off road it's just a lot more comfortable like i don't have a lot of weight in the car but it just really seemed that heavy duty torsions just i don't know really helped to make the ride a little bit more comfortable so what i would suggest if that you are going to get a two inch lift kit get it with the torsion bars because it also does make it cheaper i got a bit of a better price from four drive one but if you do want to do it cheap the first time i would definitely say get it in the kit it is worth it and it does make a difference so yeah overall i'd say i'm pretty happy i'm sorry i haven't uploaded in a while um like i said before just had a lot of 
things going on. But one thing I did want to say separate to this video is I really appreciate everybody that uh, comments and likes. That's something about making videos I didn't think, I didn't really think about. I just made the videos because I enjoy it. Um, but it, it is nice to see people commenting things and giving me new ideas and stuff like that. So do feel free to do that. I actually really enjoy it. And I try to reply to everybody as well. So hope you guys have a good one. See you in the next video. Cheers.